All right, welcome scavengers to another episode of the Six Scale Scavengers, a Hot Toys podcast focusing on Marvel and Star Wars. This is Brian Fontaine, joined as always by my good friend and co-host Chris Letty, aka Vintage Viewport. Chris, ten days away today from Captain Marvel. The oh. excitement, it's get it's getting intense. I know we have a we're gonna have a little local viewing, you myself and uh and Raul, and we're gonna get going and go opening night at 9 50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Oh man, I don't usually go to movies that late anymore, my uh my older age. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to it over at uh O'Neill Cinema Cinemas in Epping, New Hampshire. Just went there today and saw Mary Poppins with my daughter. So thoroughly enjoyed it. But, yeah, very uh, good. Yeah. Very good film. We saw that opening night with our yeah. family. So yeah, yeah good but, stuff there. I know uh, Raul had been, uh, he actually had reached out to us. And I know we've said for a while because he's also local here to New Hampshire to get together. And what better way to get the scavengers in New Hampshire together better than going see a Marvel MCU movie on opening night. Heck yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. They keep on dropping more and more trailers and I'm trying to avoid them at all costs. Just don't want to get too much information beforehand, but it's really hard to, uh, to do so. Yeah. Marvel studio news has already seen the film, uh, Sean Gerber and definitely said that the trailers don't do the movie any justice and it, it kind of, it, it swerves on you. So without, mm -hmm. You know, I don't know any spoilers. I haven't gone out and looked for any of them. You know, we're both, uh, we've got Captain Marvel on pre-order for a hot toy release. And yeah, 10 days from today would be opening night. I don't know if technically that means we'd see it in nine days. And depending on when you actually listen to this podcast, uh, it all depends on when it's coming out. But it's, <laughs> let me just put it this way. It's less than two weeks away. And then Chris, on social media today, Marvel, all their social media channels or stuff are saying, Hey, Avengers Endgame in two months. And I don't, I can't remember a film that is coming up that has such hype and intrigue about it. And we don't know anything about it. And there has been what a teaser trailer and then like a Super Bowl spot. And I don't even know if any of the leaks or any of the toy things can actually be believed because some people are saying they might actually be fake. So I don't know anything about this movie. It's insane that a movie of this magnitude has kept all those secrets close to the chest. I'm, I just cannot wait for either one of these films, but especially Endgame, I think we'll probably get a better understanding of where that movie uh, might go after seeing Captain Marvel. But yeah, it's just crazy. Two months away, Endgame, man. What, what kind of figures are we going to see from that movie? <laughs> going to be quite the discussion going forward this year with that. I honestly think once we get an official trailer, which I think at this point, they're probably going to wait for Captain Marvel to hit theaters, have about a week or so to bask in its own success. And then we're going to see something for, I think at that point, we're going to see something for Endgame. You know, Marvel's got some big stuff planned. I know, Chris, you're going to be heading out to Star Wars Celebration. I feel like we're on the precipice of a lot of Star Wars news. The Mandalorian just wrapped recently, whether it's the series, you know, recap, or if it's season one of many, who knows? I mean, Star Wars Resistance is out there. J.J. Abrams tweeting out pictures of the new trio in the sequel trilogy, you know, embracing each other, the end of saga with with episode nine the kind of the capstone to the skywalker saga who knows what's going to happen there i think star wars celebration is going to give us I, I don't think they're going to give us any answers there chris to be honest but i think they're going to leave us with more questions and hopefully we see some footage maybe a trailer jj come on buddy <laughs> hopefully i'm in one of the panels <laughs> we'll see uh i you know we'll be chronicling uh that my journey over there as the time comes no idea what to expect lots of people saying that will you know they might not give us a trailer they might give us a teaser there people saying that we might not get title till after celebration like on may the 4th 
I don't know, man. There's there's going to so be a lot fun. of angry Star yeah. Wars fans in one location <laughs> in a city yeah. that's kind of unfortunately known for some violence. <laughs> so they if they know um, what's good for them, they're going to they're going to give the fans something. Yeah, we'll definitely get quite a bit of information, I'm sure. So not to be undone by all of Disney's properties that we discuss on this podcast. We've got some news of our own, Chris, with the six scale scavengers and we talked about it last time. We've got Steve on our admin team came to us and say, Hey guys, I want to do another podcast format, but use YouTube, do a Google hangout where we can get people from our community, hang out on a Friday night or on a weekend and just talk collecting. And it's been great. We've got an episode out there already. You, myself and the other admins got together for a trial run a few weeks ago, and it looks like those are going to be released on the off week from when we release a podcast. So if you're a fan of the scavengers, the six scale scavengers content, I was going to say media, but where we're podcasting YouTube, you're going to be able to have that available. And we have a name now. And Chris, I'm going to butcher the heck out of this because I look at it and I would say <laughs> it's Scavengers Assemble, kind of a take on Avengers Assemble, but it's either Scavengers Assemble or <laughs> Scavengers Assemble. <laughs> <laughs> I, and Steve, I've been practicing that many times, my friend, <laughs> to say that out loud. It looks better on the YouTube description, to be honest, but you know, Steve's done an awesome job and it was great this past week. We had some of our community members on there and it's collecting is a niche thing anyways, Chris. And then I feel like hot toys and six scale collecting is even further niche from there that a lot of our listeners just, they, they crave the ability to be able to talk to them about that. You and I talk about this on these podcasts. Our listeners are able to hear you and I talk about it, but it's a very one-sided conversation. It's the conversation you and I are having and everybody else gets to listen into it. But with this other format with using Google Hangouts through YouTube, there's video of it. You can interact with other collectors. Steve does a great job about putting together an agenda with looking at some of the images from Sideshow, Hot Toys, any other stuff that's going on with pop culture type things. Very exciting format. Yeah, it's a great time. I, I had fun jumping in on this past Friday, it was kind of, we weren't too sure if we were going to publish the episode, the conversation, the content worked out really well. And it was just great to talk, you know, whatever Steve had in mind. We had TC on there, Matt, we had Mila. Mark jumped on for a bit with his, um, I think they were like, Hello Kitty uh, headphones. So. <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor Mark. I know he was... He was doing his best there. I think next time around we'll we'll straighten Mark out. But uh, no, it was fun to have him on. But yeah, it was. It's just a great, great uh, format, different format from the podcast, a way to interact with with people, and and hopefully we can get a pretty good cast of characters each and every time out. So yeah, I definitely check it out on the YouTube channel and and keep an eye out for posts on that. Yeah, we wanted to give, before we got into news here, Chris, we wanted to give a quick shout out to the Mint and Seal Box podcast. They just started, uh, speaking of kind of new media and stuff, they just put together a, a new YouTube channel that combines a lot of their own content with, I know, uh, Ryan, one of our listeners also is now contributing to them. It looks like they're trying to put out the daily content. So Chris, you and I talk about it all the time. You know, we're just one of the voices out there. There's another voice out there. And it's just great to see six scale content, hot toys, sideshow stuff getting, I, I don't really want to say more mainstream, but the fact that there's more people talking about it gives, you know, our listeners, I, I say it all the time. If you are a collecting podcast listener that listens to collecting podcasts, you're probably not just listening to our podcast. It's where we talk about all of our other friends out there. BJ, the Paradox Nerd, Zach and a gang over Collecting Weekly. You know, there, there's there's tons of options out there that you can fill your day with free collecting chatter on podcasts. For sure. Justin and Zach, 
you know, they're putting together quite the lineup of content themselves. Justin's got his own, his own YouTube channel. Zach's got his YouTube channel. Now they got men seal box media channel. So, I mean, it's just, there's just so much to take in and so many different points of views to go off of. So it's, it's great. I, I, I love hearing what they have to say and they've got some pretty neat interviews with other YouTubers and collectors around the world. So yeah, check them out too. All right, Chris, let's get into news. And I feel like we're a little light on news. I, I thought last week, last Friday, we're either going to get a release at Secret Base in Hong Kong. I thought we were going to get pre-order available. We got we got nothing. You know, as usually happens every time, Chris, the news drops right after we publish a podcast episode. And <laughs> it happened last time, literally a day or two after we published our last podcast. The drop came from Commander Cody from Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, the figure that was teased at San Diego Comic-Con 2018. Whew, this one's a good one. <laughs> you ain't kidding. I mean, they if they can if they can knock out clones to this level of um detail and everything, I mean they're gonna have a hit every time. Just Cody, the head sculpt, just the weathering on the, the armor and all the accessories and, and the tease of another trooper as well. I mean for all those prequel clone lovers out there, I, you can't ask for much more, especially with Obi-Wan hopefully coming soon. This is a, a great companion piece for that. Yeah, Chris, this clone looks phenomenal. And it begs to wonder if it seems like Hot Toys really has to kind of stick to the movies for the most part. On the Marvel side, they've now been able to tap into the video games a little bit. They were able to tap in a Sony Spider-Man. They were able to give us the War Machine Punisher from Future Fight. It doesn't seem like we would get a Captain Rex under normal circumstances, but do you think we could get one? I don't know. This is That's the thing everybody wants to know, I think. it's it, Captain Rex is definitely one of the most popular. And then going into the Clone Wars series, also Fives and Echo... I know Sideshow, with the help of Hot Toys, put out a lot of those clones that are still desirable today. They are still commanding a high price. But I'm just looking at these images, Chris, of Commander Cody. And like on its own, as a standalone figure, it almost looks like a must-have for any Star Wars collector. For me, and knowing that I had Obi-Wan on pre-order but ended up canceling just because it doesn't really fit into my focus, it's like, hmm, could I find a focus for clones if I knew there was going to be multiple ones? So this was not a day one pre-order, but I do know it was a day one pre-order for a heck of a lot of our Star Wars listeners in our Facebook group, and I can't blame them. I mean, it looks phenomenal. The weathering on this armor looks incredible. The head sculpt is amazing. I can't say enough good things about this figure. I mean, literally, Hot Toys just keeps getting better. I mean, we say it all the time. We, I'm sure some of our listeners think we're just fanboys, but it's hard to say anything negative about this whatsoever. This figure could open up the floodgates for clones, whether it be Rex or, you know, just other generic troopers to put in the background all different paint apps, exclusives, depending on how well this figure sells. And I think it will sell very well. I think the possibilities are endless. I look at the amount of figures that Hasbro produced for clones. I mean, it's silly. It's a ridiculous amount of clones that they produced. Even if they came out with four to five different clones, uh, I think a lot of Star Wars fans would be very happy with that. I just, I'm, I'm literally fawning over this figure. It's incredible. I'm just looking at all the images here. And to be honest, it's a really good price for what you're getting. Uh, it's going to go for 243 It looks like it's going to be available at the beginning of 2020, which still feels weird to say that, by the way, Chris. January to March 2020. MMS 524, and that did release on February 15th. So we're about 11 days out from that release. It's been the last news, anything we've gotten for Hot Toys. 
I feel like as soon as we drop this episode this week, Chris, we're going to get more news, but such is life. I would bet on it. <laughs> like you said, it seems to be the trend. They're hinting at the airborne trooper in the background. So I would expect that one to come out at some point this year. You know, that's a, that's a strong possibility. And then also, like you said, a good price point for where you're getting, you're getting multiple holograms, uh, miniature holograms that sit in his hand. You've got a rifle, you've got a blaster, a pack. The Rex, I mean, the Rex hand, hand blasters. Yep. Yeah, I um, mean, a head, the separate head sculpt alone, I think for anybody that's got like the sideshow clones, I think even if you had no intention of ever taking the helmet off of Cody, I feel like you could you could parse out the head sculpt. And we'll talk about that in a little bit later to, uh, you know, to, to knock this price down even further. And, you know, I, I think you could easily get over forty dollars for that. I mean, you could easily probably make this figure something under two hundred dollars. We're just doing that and not really feel like you're missing too much from it. No. And, and like you said, the likeness to uh, Tamora Morrison is just spot on. Uh, you cannot, I mean, in my opinion, you can't, I can't find any faults with it. And, and that just, again, that opens up the door for the Django Fett mm -hmm. that I think has been teased. Uh, so you've got an extra head sculpt for that. And then if they want to do any other, head sculpts for the clones they just have to you know modify the hair a little bit maybe put some paint on them or tattoos or whatever it might be again great option for for hot toys and also for like you said like the uh consumer to potentially parse it out so yeah i'm i'm loving it i'm slowly kind of talking myself into it even though i'm not sure where it would fit and i don't want it to be an odd duck in my collection but man does it it looks it looks great so very awesome news for our listeners that are star wars collectors last bit of news is and this is some insider information from steve in our group is the fact that we know we got the tease and the release of the infinity war hulkbuster 2.0 power pose has already released in Hong Kong at Secret Base. People have it in hand. Well, Sideshow is going to have it on March 4th for shipping. So pretty soon we expected that. It, it's funny that they already have the Hulkbuster ready to go, but we're sitting here wondering when Black Panther is going to come out. <laughs> uh, I know. It's, it's, and Sideshow's been doing a lot of promo stuff. They've done an unboxing uh, I think they had a comedian on. I don't remember the name of it to do an unboxing of the figure. They just did the how to be a poser videos that we dropped on our Facebook pages as well, showing the posing, the, the figure. It has to be soon. I mean, it has to be. I would think so. Again, I, I mean, I, I have it on order. I haven't received anything for months, any updates for email wise, but I'm just anxiously uh, and patiently <laughs> waiting for it, watching everybody else's videos and, and such. I just watched that video uh, that you spoke of, How to Be a Poser from Sideshow. I just watched that on my TV this morning with my daughter, and, and she was getting all into it. And, you know, she was, you know, we were talking about how to create the pose. You, you uh, kind of look at how you your body would move and that sort of thing. I mean, just great advice and definitely stuff that I have to put into place when I when I pose my figures. Black Panther can't wait. Hopefully coming soon. I'm sure he'll be a, uh, a feature figure review at some point here. Yeah. So speaking of feature figure review, we're going to have the Doctor Strange figure from Infinity War is the figure we're going to talk about this episode in episode 16, MMS 484. We both have that in hand. And spoiler alert, it's pretty good. <laughs> it definitely is. <laughs> uh, so that's all the news we've got. And, you know, it, it happens from time to time. I feel like as soon as the floodgates open for Endgame, is when we're going to have a crazy amount of news to talk about. I know Roy, who we've now got part of the team that's helping us out, has done some great analysis of what the bandwidth for Hot Toys may be for 
un, unannounced figures that they have not either even teased or shown up for pre-order at this point. I want to say, and he's going to probably smack me from the Netherlands if I say this wrong, but I think there's got about 20 figures that still could come out this year that we don't even know anything about, just based on trends of kind of slowly increasing production levels year over year. That's kind of insane because I feel like they've got a lot of catching up to do and we're not even through February. <laughs> it's, I don't know. Yeah, it's funny because like Hot Toys is usually a lot of hurry up and wait. Yeah. I mean, these things are not cheap. And, you know, I I think it helps it a little bit for budgeting. I've got some money set aside in my budget just in case some of these Avengers Endgame figures could end up releasing in 2019, just like some of the Infinity War ones snuck in at the end of 2018. Because if there's a Captain America, there's an Iron Man, any of like these Avengers that come out, I mean, I'm going to want to have the Endgame version just a Marvel fanatic kind of at this point. And, you know, we know I've got a couple of Luke Skywalkers this year, R2-D2. I'm sure there's going to be a Ray for episode nine. It's going to be pandemonium. It's great. I love it. <laughs> yeah, let the uh, predictions fly. I, I know every once in a while we kind of throw out some figures that we think uh, might be coming. But yeah, it's going to be it's going to be really interesting, especially figures that are currently uh, on pre-order. I know Steve and Roy have kind of, they've laid out how the releases are projected throughout the rest of the year based on quarters. And it seems like quarter three of this year is very, very heavy for releases. So (laughs) I'm, I don't know if they come out with more figures, man, it's, it's going to be uh, tough for the budget. That's for sure. Well, if anything, they're going to be quarter four stuff. It's going to be October, November, December, on the at the earliest for anything they haven't shown. I think the 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 quickest release I feel like we got in 2018, I want to say was Black Widow, and I think that one was the end of April to the the beginning of September, and I think that one was like the quickest we got. Yeah, we got that one really quick, and it you know that was a pleasant surprise. I don't know if we would really get one that quickly. Maybe it'll be Black Widow again. I don't know. I don't know if that's like a thing with Black Widow, but uh, <laughs> just because they've made so many of her, you know, it, it's a fun thing to uh, discuss and speculate on, even though we don't really speculate too much. <laughs> no, not at all. All right, let's shift gears, Chris. Let's talk about our collection update. And I'll leave the part about me going and crazily selling head sculpts and weapons and parts and stuff on eBay for our topic section. So I'll leave that part out of the collection update, but I'm the one kind of with a lot of exciting news this time around. I've been what we like to call a little busy. And part of that is just reorganizing my collection a little bit. Now, not to steal any of the thunder because we're going to talk about them in our feature figure review, audio review with Dr. Strange. You and I both got him. We have an issue with getting things from Sideshow, especially if it spans a weekend. And of course, this release spanned President's Day. So when everybody had it before the weekend, you and I had to wait until Tuesday to get it, which I'm usually willing to wait for these because they're so good. And that figure was so phenomenal. But does kind of sting sometimes when we're in the same country as everybody else, but we feel like we have to wait a little bit longer up here in the Northeast. <laughs> I know Matt gets his like within a day being in uh, California and same with Myla. I, I think she lives like 20 minutes from Sideshow or something like that. And, and we're like twiddling our thumbs, you know, a week later getting ours. But the bad thing about that is come to find out from both of them, they pay the exact same amount we do in shipping. So I feel I like know. we got I feel like we got the better end of that deal. I know we we also don't pay uh, sales tax either. So that's a bonus for us. <laughs> Live free or die. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I didn't stop there, Chris, with getting Doctor Strange. We we mentioned it last time out that to you know, keep your eyes peeled on the buy sell trade groups on Facebook because it's the time of year people like I just did are kind of going through a collection, figuring out what are the keepers, what are things that are great figures, but you might be able to part with trying to plan out releases for the year. And 
this is a figure, Chris, I've had my eye on for quite some time, but could never find one that I felt comfortable with a price just because it's a little light on accessories. It doesn't have a head sculpt, but I was able to score the Black Panther from Civil War for basically retail, which at this point is pretty crazy. Very lightly used, might as well be new. Those that's not a bad combination to have and and basically retail for for shipping. So I know a lot of the figures out there now, you it's really hard to find one under 300. And it's either people that, you know, just because I personally love the figure a lot. I think it's it's actually on the underrated side. But people may be looking to if they don't want to have multiple Black Panthers in their collection, may look to trade that out for the new version coming. It's a great looking figure, man. I I watched I believe it was Justin's collection, his comparison video and the Civil War Black Panther looks badass. And it's it definitely has a different body, like a shape to the body. But yeah, I can't wait to check out that one in person. You've got it a nice setup with uh, Black Widow and, and Rocket there. I like it. Yeah, I don't know if that's where he'll stay, but that's where he is now. So speaking of Black Panther and we talk about. <sighs> Not necessarily making mistakes, but learning and trial and error and whatnot. But sometimes you kind of have to admit you're wrong as collectors. And I did that. And I initially had pre-ordered Black Panther when it was first came out. I'm pretty sure it was a day one pre-order. And I came back and canceled it when I was going through over the summer and, and re kind of doing my collection and what I wanted. Well, Chris, I watched Black Panther again. Obviously, Black Panther did phenomenal at the Oscars three wins the first three for Marvel Studios so congratulations Black Panther well deserved and I was like I gotta I gotta have Black Panther in my collection so I went and I re-pre-ordered it I did try to talk to Sideshow and say hey any chance I could uh reinstate that pre-order that I've already paid the the NRD the non-refundable deposit yeah no go not a chance. They're like, yeah, that money's gone. Sorry. I had to try. Uh, yeah. Give it the old college try. Uh, <laughs> it's too bad. But, you know, we we talk about it. You know, we're not we're not experts. We, we've only been doing this for a short period of time. We've both canceled pre-orders before. So, I mean, it's just like. It's money you know spent and and uh you can make it up elsewhere so yeah, yeah. It, it, it happens i'm not yeah. i'm not it's like the end of the world that i i lost that original deposit but to me i consider that kind of a you know like a 25 26 lesson so it didn't stop there chris as i was looking at my collection and this was hard for me to do and i know our admin team gave me grief for this because you and i and everybody else under the sun loves rogue one but I had a couple of figures in my collection that as my Star Wars collection has kind of gone down a little bit, the offset has been my Marvel collection has gone up. I know you're strictly exclusively Marvel. So we're going to be look, looking for ways to rectify that going forward. We think we're going to explore having a three person booth coming up soon, having guest co-hosts come on and be able to help us review Star Wars figures just so we can give our listeners that content so it doesn't become exclusively all Marvel on the podcast. Uh, so we have some stuff in the works on that. Stay tuned for more. But I had two figures that I love. They're great, but it just didn't really fit. I'm really looking at space constraints at this point. And one thing about having our group that we, we, we say good things about our group all the time, it, it's such a great, small, tight-knit community that sometimes people make the post say, Hey, I'm really looking for this figure or, you know, can you help me find one of these? I know we've talked about that in prior episodes, helping out people track down figures. It's a lot easier to do that with a group of people looking for things versus just yourself individually. So I know Steve and our group had really been looking for a K2. It's a figure that I've had. I know we reviewed several episodes ago. It just it just didn't fit. And I decided that I was going to be able to part with it. So I'd reached out to him just to say to see if he was interested before I went out to the open market. It was a very short conversation. He was absolutely interested. So came to a really good accord on a, on a good price. 
and uh, he's already got that in hand. It looks great in his collection. I love the fact that he, he as he told me, I, I can still have visitation rights if I want. I just have to pay for the plane ticket. And then when he left, I had cheer at Mway. And, you know, right now my Rogue One collection is essentially Jenner, so Deluxe and my Shore Trooper. And on our group, I had said, hey, is there anybody interested at all before I, you know, go out to the other groups, go to eBay? And Mike reached out to me in my group. And unbeknownst to me, it's a figure he had been looking for a while. It was one of his grail pieces. He absolutely really wanted one. He had been saving up for one and went to go order it from a site. He had been earmarked it for. And the day that he had the money available to go get it, they had just sold out of it. So it was perfect timing. And I love that really about our community to be able to create those win-win opportunities. You know, I won because I opened up some money in my budget. I opened up space on my own collection. And then Mike gets a figure for a screaming deal and fits one that he had really wanted for a while. So, you know, we strongly encourage that type of atmosphere in the collecting community where it's not out to extract every dollar out there. You know, we're not out there, uh, you know, air quotes scalping things or or trying to just maximize money. Sometimes it's about the, the better part of collecting the friendship and helping each other out. Couldn't agree more. That's, it's a great scenario that, uh, came up there for, for Mike and for Steve. And, and I know that they were both very happy, you know, they posted on, on multiple groups, uh, just very excited about those purchases. Again, great figures. And I know it gave you a little bit of, uh, grief, um, about <laughs> Jin being next, but you know, it, it's, it's all about evolving as a collector and, and fine tuning your collection and that sort of thing. So there's, there's nothing really wrong with that. I mean, I'll just give you more crap next year when you're buying K2SO for twice the price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I won't be buying it back from Steve. So, you know, speaking of like helping out the community, you know, Chris, I know this is somebody that you've uh, that we've praised multiple times before on the podcast. She's just an excellent part of the collecting community. She's part of many groups and is just a great a, a great voice and a great collector out there. So you had something that you were able to add to your collection as well. Yeah. Myla has just been, uh, she's just been an angel within the community. She's just, she's just awesome. Making an appearance uh, on our scavengers <laughs> assemble. See, it doesn't roll off the tongue, does it? <laughs> Scaven- scavenger, scavenger, Scave- scavengers, okay. yeah, scavengers. I know. I know. So no, she's been great. And uh, I had mentioned the other week that I, you know, I, I was kind of in the market for a Matt Murdock head sculpt to go along with my uh, Netflix Daredevil figure. Yeah. So Myla, she's been amazing within the community, just so generous with, you know, with her custom sculpts and everything that she's been practicing on and that sort of thing she's got extra ones kicking around and and, uh so yeah i had mentioned that i really was looking for a matt murdoch head sculpt to go with my netflix daredevil and so yeah we she uh she was nice enough to send me out one and and now i'm looking for you know potentially a uh a suit to go along with that one six kit has a um a matt murdoch suit and accessories to to put together one. But yeah, so Milo's been awesome. She's on every group you could think of for one six and, and now she's teasing us with getting into statues and I'm like, oh no. Yeah, no the Milo's fantastic and we love the fact that she's so active in the you know one six community and uh super glad that we're part of one of those places where she interacts. She's definitely a bright spot in the community. So that's a heck of a collection update, Chris. And I think I failed to mention another one that I had kind of snuck in actually last night because I feel like I've been giving you grief for about two episodes now because you're like, hey, man, I got like this $20 mailer from Sideshow, $20 off. I just, you know, and you can use it for pre-orders or anything. (laughs) We live in the the same state and I haven't gotten anything. And out of the blue, like a few days ago, I finally got it in the mail. I'm like, are you kidding me? 
Not like I'm ungrateful for getting a twenty dollar off coupon from Sideshow because I actually was very thrilled to actually get it because I didn't think I was going to. I just thought either my name wasn't on that mailing list or they only sent it out to sporadic people. Uh, but I know I had sent you the image and I'm like, yeah, I'm not bitter. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I used that last night actually to I, I've been eyeing Bucky Barnes from Infinity War for quite a while. And I figured, what the heck, I've got the coupon. I might as well put it on so I can also factor it in my budget. Bucky's a figure that obviously you pair well with Cap. He's a character I really like. Also like Thor, but I feel like this could be like the definitive version of him in the MCU. I like the fact that he's got kind of the new metal arm sculpt and it doesn't have a lot of material on him like he has in his prior releases where... You know, there was like leather parts that could eventually flake in time. So I'm actually really looking forward to it. And you talk about that, like that July, August time frame is going to be brutal for collectors right now. As it stands, my budget will be able to withstand it because things are going to get pretty dry for me for a little bit. But that's OK. And I think that's why it's important to whether you throw things in an Excel sheet like I do you just you just figure out when those releases are, you know, when your budget would be available. Uh, if it's something coming up and you just need to make these things available, you know, if you need to sell a figure or uh, or whatnot to be able to kind of plan for that. Great stuff, man. I'm glad you uh, you ordered it. It's funny because like I used a coupon back when he first came out on uh, my pre order for Bucky, but yeah, looks like an awesome figure. Again, can't wait. All right, let's get turn to our topics. And I wanted to talk about, I, I teased it a little bit on the Scavengers Assemble number one. And I didn't have the opportunity to hang around and talk to too many of our community members for that long because it was Friday night. And it's kind of movie night in our household. But I know in our group, I've everyone's kind of been following along. I think I mentioned it last time out when I was really exploring being able to part with some of my figures that I will just probably never sell. They're just, they're popular figures. They're, they're, you know, focus collection of mine, Captain America, Iron Man, Spider-Man. And there, I'm not big on displaying things that have a lot of extra accessories or for head sculpt wise, you know, some figures like a Spider-Man or an Iron Man. I like them with either their mask on or in Iron Man's case, his helmet. And I had a lot of parts that I went through. And I spent a good chunk of time, I know I've talked about it previously, where I got a whole bunch of small plastic containers to really organize my collection, to be able to put a lot of those extra hands and weapons and accessories in a spot where they're easily accessible, so that when I do want to repose, it's there. I don't have to drag out the big side, uh, the, the big Hot Toys box open everything up, figure out what I want to get out for hands to be able to change something, hopefully simplify the process when I've got some more time. So I went ahead and did that. And I, I ended up deciding that I had a couple extra head sculpts and, and things that I just never would be able to dis, just want to display. And I felt like, you know, they could be semi valuable kind of on the open market. I didn't know, I didn't know how to price them. I didn't know exactly how I wanted to go about it. So I turned to eBay and I kind of ran an experiment, Chris. I put out about four head sculpts. I put out a bunch of the accessories from the Spider-Man Homecoming advanced suit release. You know, the backpack, the, the earphones, the book. I had a couple extra lightsabers. I had a couple extra machine guns and stuff from some Captain America figures that... In my opinion, Captain America shouldn't use a gun, so he's just got a shield and various different things. Kind of ran a little bit of an experiment, and I also ran an experiment to have everything have free shipping, but open the opening bid, basically at what it would cost me to ship. So anything over that I know would be kind of air quotes, the, the profit of, of what could be there. And if it just didn't really sell that well, I mean, yeah, I'd be out the accessory, but I wouldn't have to eat any of the shipping for that. So I listed 17 items, Chris, as I mentioned, and some of them surprised me. Some of the accessories went for quite a bit. I think one of the ones that surprised me probably the most was using Thor's 
uh, bare arms from Avengers Infinity War. I never would have displayed with that one. I, I like the look he has at the end of the film. Those went for almost $52. Some of the head wow. sculpts. Yeah, <laughs> some of the head sculpts. A Captain America head sculpt from Civil War went for 76. I had a Tony Stark Mark IV one go for 47. The This seemed a little sacrilegious to do, but I just never would display the Mark 47 head sculpt and the glasses out there. I was able to get $91 for that. And, and a bunch of other things, like somebody paid $29 for a, a six scale backpack. So there's a market for these things out there. I think the one thing I learned from the whole thing, Chris, was it, it definitely has to be a popular figure. And I think it also has to be things that people would use kind of in a kit bash or, or things that are just not really available out there on the open market to be able to purchase and to kind of create those other versions of the character that I, I know Peter Parker is a pretty popular one to make. I know Tony Stark is also a popular one to make, whether it's his racing suit from Iron Man 2, whether it's some of his business attire wear from any of the other films. It's uh, It was surprising. I think after shipping and after all the fees and stuff, and I still have one person that has yet to pay me for a Tom Holland head sculpt, but I'm not bitter about that. I'm looking at about $375 I was able to add net for those 17 items, which as a couple people pointed out, it's about a figure and a half or it could be Thanos. I'm not sure I would add Thanos at this point, but these are just extra things lying around in my collection. We talk about all the time using your collection as currency. Well, it doesn't have to be a full figure. It can actually be these other things, those are things that I just never would have even displayed. And I was able to find value in my collection to basically add a figure and a half to my collection down the road. I think the biggest thing is the desirability of the particular figure and accessories, you know, that you're putting on there. That's where, you, I mean, that's where you made your money. That's where most people are going to make their money. It's like the rifles and that sort of thing. You've got thousands and thousands of rifles and that sort of thing on on ebay and other retailers so it's kind of unless it's a very specific one like say the um rifle that colson has in avengers or something like that that thing might go for good money but uh military rifles yeah that's a tough one i do have to thank you for your gift of of one of them to me <laughs> it'll it'll go into uh punisher's arsenal i think but yeah i think being selective with what you're parsing out is is key or i mean if you're gonna be parting out a complete figure you're gonna have to be willing to wait for the whole for everything to you know to sell I know TC was mentioning on our uh, hangouts that he has an extra Infinity War Thor that he's parting out completely. So it'll be interesting to see his results from that that experiment. <laughs> so yeah, and I I keep I've been following his listing. I think it's got a day or two left, and my math was kind of bad, but I think he was up to maybe like 170, 180 the last I had checked. So still not quite the full figure. And, you know, there's still, you know, that extra time frame, you know, with an eBay auction style, the last day, even the last hour, the last five minutes, the last one minute can really be where you make a lot of it. And for me, like I think I've said before, too, I was willing to get almost next to nothing for a lot of these. They're just extra things in my collection. And, you know, there, there is some gain to be had, I think. If I could do it again, like you mentioned, I would probably skip out on a lot of the weapons and accessories. I mean, most of them didn't even top $10. It was really those, uh, you know, it was the Spider-Man stuff. I mean, one thing that surprised me was the Count Dooku lightsaber from the Anakin release. That one went for 34 And, you know, that's one, if you have that Anakin figure, and it, it seems like those don't come available all that often. I know I had several people asking me and a lot of these desirable things, what it would take me to end the auction early, which told me like, yeah, there's going to be a lot of late action on a lot of these things. I didn't know what to price them at. And then I had one person that bid up the Tom Holland head sculpt and then decided 
after a couple of days, they didn't want it. And I had to relist it. I relisted it and I got about half of what I did the, the from the first time. So I don't want to come here and say, hey, there's there's great results to be had there because of eBay and auctions. It all depends on who's looking, what their uh, what their budgets are and stuff. You can't really ever count on it. But I, I think it just shows you that there's a market out there if you're patient enough, if you're willing to do a longer auction or if you feel pretty confident that you can get a certain price for something listening out there as a buy it now and just being able to sit on it until somebody comes along and is willing to meet what you are offering. I mean, it's, it's a great little experiment. And I think you just, if you're going to start piecing out figures, I would definitely make sure that it's a figure that you're going to probably hang on to. Cause yeah, I mean the market could tank. Like I know Steve had asked me, he's like, Hey, did you do any analysis? What would happen if what it would do to the value? I think the one figure that I had uh, taken some things out that's been kind of, I've been teetering on if I want to keep or eventually let go was the Anakin from Revenge of the Sith. Ultimately decided I was going to keep it, but I did let go of the Dooku lightsaber and I just never would really display him with his Jedi robe, even though that's probably one of his iconic looks. I just decided I could do without both of those. And now if I went to go list it, the, the figure would take a hit, but right now I would argue that that figure is taking a hit anyways. I've seen it sitting on groups for like $175 shipped right now. It's, I, I think people kind of flooded the market with it at this point, and there's just not a, a lot of demand for prequel figures, which is unfortunate because it really is a good figure. And I, I don't really regret it because it's got a good spot in my collection, but I think also too, like you said, you hit the key point there, Chris. It's If it's a desirable figure or not, is it something that's sold out or is scarce? And then from there, that's where there's potential. So you're right. I would never sell any of these other you know pieces that I did do that to. The figure would take a hit if I ever did decide to sell them because it wouldn't be complete at that point. But it was a risk I was willing to take. And I know a lot of other listeners have reached out to us and they're like, oh, man, I'm like so OCD. I don't think I could do that if I didn't have a complete figure. Once once I was able to let go of the first, you know, I had a broken shield for Captain America, never would have displayed it. I just didn't feel like fixing it myself. Once I listed that and it went and it went decently, it was kind of my little gateway to, you know, deciding that I could want to do that. And I know I gave I gave Zach a, a shout out from Collecting Weekly last time about going out and getting that lightsaber from the Palpatine release and just and realizing that if I found that lightsaber hilt desirable, then there'll be other things out there that people are looking for to kind of complete their custom figure, even if it's just kit bashing and not actually customizing the figure. I'm always kind of just looking at eBay and, and the various accessories and stuff that are out there to maybe add to a figure. I think once I've got everything all set up, you know, down the road, you know, I might decide to start piecing things out or, you know, adding adding other little uh, bits and bobs to uh, to these figures, but it it's a fun little part of this collecting arena with within the six scale community. I mean, you can just go nuts with accessories. A lot of the military figures that they put out there, I mean, they come with just an insane amount of accessories. So you can come up with anything you want, display wise. Yeah, it's just fun. Yeah, no more more to come. I, I know we yeah. won't. This won't be the last time we ever talk about it on the podcast. And you know, we hope you reach out to us either on our Facebook page or Facebook group, six scale scavengers at gmail dot com. If you prefer email and you're not into the whole social media thing, we'd love to hear from you. One other final topic I wanted to cover really quickly, Chris, before we got into our Doctor Strange talk. I wanted to go back and I told him I'd give him a shout on the podcast talking about Mike and the deal that we had done for cheer it. And he had said, you know, that he's like, I've never, I've never bought anything from a group or I've never just used PayPal to get a figure. I've always either used eBay or gone through one of the bigger sites and stuff. And it was a good opportunity because it's somebody that's been in our community for a while. You and I, Hopefully, to most people feel trustworthy. We've been around for 16 episodes now. We're not going anywhere anytime soon. We're about as transparent as can be when we talk about our collection update, what we're doing, what we're not doing. 
And I thought it was a good opportunity to kind of talk about some tips and stuff that maybe you and I have just kind of come to take for granted because we do have some experience with it, but maybe some things to just kind of watch out for things to kind of keep in mind if you do decide to go that route. So I think first thing, it makes it a lot easier if you know who you're getting it from. It's somebody you've interacted with quite a bit in the in the past. You your trust they're they're trustworthy and know them. That makes it a lot easier to do a deal. You and I, we're good friends. We've done a couple deals. You know where I live if it went south. I'm not worried about that. Using PayPal, you have the option to send friends and family where it's just the money but in between there, PayPal doesn't get a cut, especially if it's coming from your PayPal balance. There's also the option to send it goods and services. If you are buying something on a group and you don't know the person at all, even if they're not like an internet friend or someone you know for a while, absolutely send it goods and services. It gives you some protection. If the deal goes south or you don't get anything, you have the opportunity to be able to get your money back. That would be my recommendation all the time is use the goods and services, even if it ends up costing you an extra five to ten dollars on the transaction. When I when I list something on a group, I factor in that four percent fee on my price. A lot of people will make you calculate it in. They'll say, hey, this is the price. Doesn't include shipping, doesn't include fees. I'm like, is it really that hard to add an extra five to ten dollars for the fees and just build it into your price? But Anyways, I digress. <laughs> Goods and service services, one hundred percent. I buy a lot of vintage Star Wars stuff from overseas, and every time I'm I'm doing goods and services, I, you know, people will be like, you know, friends and family. I'm like, nope, I don't know you, or I just know you on Facebook. I'm I'd rather pay the extra five, 10, 15 bucks, whatever it might be just to cover my butt. And and I've actually never had any problems. So like I could have risked it. It's kind of like, you know, driving without car insurance or something. It's like, hey, I've never got an accident. I've never, never had any problems, but I'd rather do it. The The friends and family, like, you know, I just sold some stuff to Steve. We did friends and family. You know, I know him through the group and stuff and we're, we're good there. But again, it, it's just to cover your butt. Honestly, you don't want to get burned on a situation with eBay. You have a little bit more backing from eBay, PayPal. If you just do friends and family and the package gets lost or is damaged, it's, it's a situation you don't really want to get yourself into, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where I take it for granted because I've been using PayPal or, you know, eBay for gosh, 15 years now. So, and I've been buying from groups for probably six or seven years now. So it's, I kind of forget that there's people that are just, you know, they just never had the opportunity to do so, but yeah, it's, it's great information, man. And, and if any of our members ever have any questions about this, I know there's all the information on, on the internet and that sort of thing, but definitely feel free to message either one of us and uh, we'll gladly give you any pointers or walk you through. So, yeah. Yeah. And, Just, and don't be embarrassed about it. I mean, it's certainly ask the question so you feel confident. And even with Mike, I even had said, Hey, if you want to do goods and services, I'm good with that. Just so he had peace of mind, but you know, he, you know, he had declined that and obviously it worked out great. I was so happy to see that in his collection. He was so happy to get that. And actually it got there a day earlier than the post office told me it would be. And, uh, I, again, we'll probably talk that up again. We love getting topic ideas to talk about on the podcast. Like I said, we're just one of the voices out there. If there's something that our listeners would like us to talk about or cover or give us a, our opinion or take on it, our experience. Just let us know. We'll definitely get it on a future episode. Getting on to our feature figure review. Uh, we, we teased it earlier. Dr. Strange from Infinity War. This is a figure, man, that I know both of us were eagerly anticipating it. A lot of people were. Give me some of the specs. Yeah, this was... And I had mentioned it before, too. This is a figure I jumped on late just because I wasn't sure about it. But the more I went back through, I did my I'm still in the process of my Marvel 
MCU rewatch. I've got two left. I've got Ant-Man and the Wasp and then Infinity War. I plan on wrapping those up by the weekend. So I will be ready to go for Captain Marvel next week. And in going back through and rewatching Doctor Strange, I realized that I actually really liked the character quite a bit. Doctor Strange is a breakout in Infinity War. We talked about it last time out. Going back and rewatching his solo film in 2016 had a whole new level of appreciation. I understood a lot more about the multiverse, yeah, a lot more about the ins and outs of the things that make Doctor Strange unique, the characters surrounding him with Mordo and the Ancient One. And it was just it was just so cool. So yeah, Chris, like you mentioned, the specs. MMS 484 retail for 267 was made up for pre-order on May 18th, 2018. So after the film had come out for Infinity War, it dropped on January 1st, 2019 in Hong Kong and was made available to ship from Sideshow on February 11th. Well, it was definitely a day one pre-order for me. And I had previously been on the wait list for Doctor Strange, uh, the first version, earlier last year. And I I was just, I kept on emailing Sideshow saying, hey, is there any chance that this is coming available? I, you know, I started collecting after, after uh, it had already gone on wait list and, and, so when when this one came up, we weren't 100% sure if they were going to do an Infinity War release. But after the movie, you know, it was basically inevitable. So, yeah, I jumped, jumped right on it. And, yeah, I, it's been one of the figures that I've been anticipating probably the most out of, you know, the figures that were put up for pre-order last year. So, yeah. I'm pretty excited to have him. There's not much, not much more I could ask for with this figure. What are your initial thoughts on him? Yeah, it's incredible. You and I were talking and it feels like every release, it's like, I hate using the term like, well, one of the best ever or a hot toys just keeps getting better, but hot toys just keeps getting better. And you know, the, the head sculpt of Benedict Cumberbatch looks exactly like Dr. Strange in infinity war. There's been quite a few YouTube reviewers out there that have done the comparison to show the first release in 2016 versus this one. There's pros and cons to both. Uh, I would argue that this version improves on the first one in some in some areas, maybe isn't as strong in, in some others. But I think I think the head sculpt definitely is better on this one. I don't I just don't know what it is how they're able to just keep improving. And you can look at the progression of figures year by year by the release dates in your own collection. And you can just tell that they're getting better. I mean, from the force awakens figures to the last Jedi, the star Wars figures got better. The Marvel figures have progressively gotten better. 2014 to 2016 was a big jump. Well, I would argue there's a really big jump from 2016 to today in 2019. I think this Dr. Strange figure definitely benefits from that. The artists that work on these head sculpts, again, they're they want to keep getting better. The consumers, you know, they keep on expecting more. I demand more. a likeness oh, that matches exactly. <laughs> it's got to be exact. And uh, by the so, way, where's Vulture? Where's Cyborg? <laughs> uh, where's any and every prototype you've ever put out? No, it, it's funny how that works within the community. There's always going to be the armchair quarterbacks saying, oh, man, you know, they could have done it better. And, and these these other uh, custom sculptors are doing a better job. But it's this is mass production to to make a head sculpt look this spot on for mass product, production. It's just it's mind boggling. And, and J.C. Hong and, and the crew over there putting these together. I mean, they're just you know, they're just doing awesome, awesome work. And, and as with most jobs and stuff, you always want to strive to do better. You want to push, push the limits and it's going to be crazy to see where things are in a couple of years, as far as these, um, 
these head sculpts go. I mean, what are they going to be animatronic, you know, talking to us and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, where, where are things going to go? But as far as Dr. Strange, they, they just really did nail Dr. You know, Dr. Strange's likeness and going from the head sculpt to the, you know, the, the tailoring on the suit, on his cloak and his tunic and his belt. And I, there's just so many layers to dissect with this figure. And we'll mention it later. We've got another comparison review that one of our members provided for us because neither one of us have the first one in hand, but you know, watching some of the, the YouTubers reviews, I mean, there's not a ton different with the, the body and that sort of thing, but there's, there's little things here and there, but just looking at this figure in person, man, I'm I'm just blown away with what they can do at this scale. The arm wraps, the different fabric. I mean, this uh, thing was loaded with accessories. Oh like man. 13, just, 13 hands. I is that a record? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that's a record for hands for a Hot Toys figure. It's pretty and, close. So, yeah. you know, there's the his cloak of levitation. I think one thing people noted between the first and the second release is this one is a little bit shorter. I don't know if it's one of those. It, it's hard to tell because I'm still kind of learning about the character. If that's which one's more screen accurate to me, it looks great. You mentioned all of his clothes. I mean, it's very similar to the first release, but still, I feel like there's some improvements. And then you talk about the accessories. This might be a record. Two sling rings, two Eye of Agamotto necklaces, one open, one closed. And then there's 14 pieces of the Mystic Art stuff. I mean, there's the green, the orange, you know, things for the Time Stone. There's things for the Mystic Arts. There's a huge double ring thing. I, I, there's so many things here that I haven't even attempted to, to put on the figure yet. He's got a sword that he used against Thanos. He has those... Uh, the or the the colored ropes that he used to kind of tie him down so they can take the gauntlet off the the stand that it came with Chris I was honestly surprised that it was as thick a material and kind of very glossy than I thought it was I was just like well this thing's good just gonna be made out of cheap cardboard I don't think it would fit in a detoff it would be kind of hard to display but if you were just setting up like a like a photo booth like you have or or whatnot I feel like you could get a pretty good look with that and I'll have to say it definitely was better in hand and production than I thought it would look like in any of the prototypes. Yeah, the display really does add that extra element to the overall figure and that sort of thing. It seems like it's something for somebody that does have a bigger shelf, they could set them up on there. I really want to try to recreate that pose. There is an artist out there that has created a 3D printed arms that you can attach to it but they've got to be painted but this is a nice a nice alternative to giving you that multi-arm look and you know i i was setting them up in in the photo booth taking some pictures uh yesterday we're on february vacation here and, and my daughter yeah she's perusing the hot toys um <laughs> site going through all the the characters and stuff she hasn't really had because I have all the stuff boxed up. She hasn't really seen too much of it. I was showing her the Civil War Black Widow um, I got from you. And, and so she's helping me go through the all the accessories and stuff. And I'm like, oh, oh, don't touch the... Uh, uh. <laughs> and <laughs> she's like, Daddy, it's just a toy. Relax. And I'm like, it's not just a toy. Uh, mm. <laughs> so I'm my, like, my son my son calls them looking toys yeah i need to kind of because like i said everything i have has been tucked away i bring stuff out here and there she doesn't quite understand the looking toy aspect of it yeah she like i was trying to set up the the backdrop and it it like fell into the figure and then the figure tipped over and it was like about to fall and I'm like running to catch it. I'm like, Oh my God, I need to, on one hand, I, I need to understand like she's six years old. So on the other, you know, it's like an interact, it's a chance to interact, you know, with your kid. And, but I, I got to give it to everybody out there that has everything on display and they have young kids. It's a never, it's going to be a never ending battle 
the temptation is always going to be there and I'm probably going to have locks on my stuff because <laughs> I think it was Jeff in, in the group said, you know, you might, might find some of your hot toys hanging out in the Barbie dream house someday. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh man, I just, I dread the day, but no, it's just fun. Like setting up, set up this figure with all these accessories. I just can't, I'm just going through sideshows, uh, all the images on sideshow with the, the promo pics. And, and I'm going to try to recreate a lot of that stuff. I just can't wait. It's, it's a, a fun figure. And I'm just, as you can tell, I'm pretty excited to have this figure. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so my one, I don't know if it's necessarily a gripe about the figure. It's just something that I particularly had an issue with. Did you have issues, Chris, getting the, the, cloak of levitation to attach to his shoulders i had to futz around with it all right so i did yeah. too and i still feel like anytime i move the arms around in any way like right now i kind of have him recreating one of the poses that was just on the sideshow site while i kind of get him in my detox was kind of you know one hand uh bent up 90 degrees and one kind of down just kind of doing getting ready to do a spell but while i was doing that i feel like the two uh triangle parts where the magnets are it looks like the magnets under underneath are kind of on his uh, where his chest would be. And it was hard to kind of locate where they were so it would attach. And it does appear that there's also a magnet on his back shoulder blades where it also connects there. Once you get it, it looks really great. It, it has a great look, but that was a little frustrating to get that to that point. Yeah, the uh, the cloak really is one of those accessories where you've got to kind of work work it out and and really play around with it. It's not going to be you just slap it on there and it's going to look perfect. You you definitely have to maneuver it and manipulate it. And I don't know. I think Roy was talking about how he sometimes will kind of wet things and let them dry in place and it might give a better you know more natural flow but it's a this is a little bit different because it's the cloak of levitation it can basically do anything you could possibly think of so you could have it sticking straight up and technically it probably could do that <laughs> so but i think uh one other th one other thing with the the cloak is is the wiring if there is wire in there is not really that malleable it's it's pretty light so i would definitely go into it thinking that okay it may not be exactly like some of the the promo images but but you can get it pretty close but again it, it's just a fun accessory and i'm glad that they put the magnets on the chest and, and the shoulder and, and the back and everything. Cause it gets it to sit, sit on there pretty well. But the, the other thing is the you're going to have to really mess around with the collar too. That's one area where I keep on trying to fold it down or move it around. I got to look at some images from the movie to see how it really sits on there. But yeah, it's just fun. Before we kind of wrap things up, I don't know, actually, speaking of TC, I know he had reached out to us and he's a big college football fan. He lives in Georgia and he was like, guys, I love the four star reviews, but can you guys think about maybe doing five? Because that kind of correlates to, you know, football recruiting with like a five star recruit and whatnot. So we'll give it a shot. I mean, we're we just have fun with the ratings. It's it's purely for fun and entertainment more often than not, as we mentioned about. We're spending our hard-earned money on these things. If we sound overly optimistic or positive about them, is because there's a reason why we wanted to, to spend the money. We're not here to hate on the figures that we spent a lot of money on, but we would definitely point out something to be concerned about or aware of, like we just said. And, and I think the comments we just kind of had for the local levitation, I think, are definitely in that category of things you definitely want to be aware of. So, Chris, let's talk about some of the points about TC. And as you mentioned, he does have both versions, Doctor Strange 1.0 and this what we'll call 2.0. And he noticed a couple differences. And he did mention that the cloaks are different lengths between the two figures where the Infinity War one is shorter. That's interesting. I, I wonder, like you said, I wonder what the real 
dimensions are for the the cloak as it pertains to the movies but i'm curious as to why they would have different lengths he did say he did it he did prefer the second version versus the first and he mentions the face sculpt and the painting on that being way better on the second one as we mentioned just rewind a little bit ago us talking about how hot toys is always looking to push the envelope there uh, it does mention that articulation is about the same. Uh, we didn't mention that, but there's about the average 30 points of articulation with this. Um, pretty standard for a release. And, you know, he kind of gave us overall, he would say it's a slight improvement over the first one. He used that five-star rating uh, for both releases, and we definitely appreciate that. We love to get, as we mentioned, we'd love to get a third host on to help us with some of the Star Wars releases you know, we could take somebody dropping us an audio review. We could drop in this. Emails are great, too. So for the first version, he gave a 4.75 out of 5. And he came in. Maybe it's sacrilegious to give his score before the hosts give theirs. But he did give the Infinity War version a 5 out of 5. This is some high praise, Chris. But he says, in his opinion, it's a top 5 Hot Toy release of all time in their 1-6 scale. When you factor in the sculpt, the tailoring, the accessories, and the character importance in the movie, dang, that's uh, <laughs> that's pretty uh, that's pretty nice opinion of of the character, the figure. Yeah, I I, I mean I I don't have you know much disagreement with him. I thank TC for for giving us this review, this comparison. It gives us another added element to our reviews. And yeah, man, what, what do you think we should rate this guy on? Are so, we gonna, you know, let me know if you agree with this. And it's kind of, I'm just looking through his accessories that we have here in our show notes. And obviously I don't know why this one just stuck out more than the other, because maybe it's very similar to Benedict Cumberbatch's last name, but I'd say we should rate this on the number of cummerbunds that this has <laughs> because he has a dark oh, brown colored okay. cummerbund on the figure. So <laughs> he certainly does. That is a uh, a fashion piece that is not utilized enough in this day and age. But Doctor Strange can definitely. Uh, so anyways, just another quick aside. I've mentioned it before. The Spider-Man Homecoming soundtrack is one of my favorite. Michael Giacchino is, I feel like, one of the best composers out there to, you know, second to John Williams, in my opinion. He did do the soundtrack for Doctor Strange. Very underrated. It definitely has that Baroque style, but I also appreciate that he has some play on words on some of his uh, track titles in the film. If you go back to Rogue One, he had some pretty uh, interesting play on words, but some of the two tracks, I think at the very end of the soundtrack are Go For Baroque and Strange Days Ahead. And both are actually really good tracks. And I don't know why I just got on that tangent. <laughs> hey, man. I love those uh, Marvel soundtracks too. That's great. I'll have to go back and listen to uh, Doctor Strange soundtrack. Yeah, Giacchino does awesome. Oh, awesome speaking work, of so. speaking of like, uh, I've, it's been quite a few episodes in a row since I've done one of those Marvel Easter eggs, and I don't have my book that handy. So actually, I'll I'll grab it. So anyway, so Chris, it's been a while since we've included one of the Marvel Easter eggs. We'll go back to Doctor Strange's original film, the uh let's let's go here and i'm looking at the book and here's here's an interesting easter egg from the original doctor strange film believe it or not dormammu's motion capture was performed none other than, none other than benedict cumberbatch so in that final scene there he's actually facing off against himself <laughs> i didn't know that that's that's too funny that's too funny and hopefully someday we'll see dormammu again I'm pretty sure that Doctor Strange 2 is um, in the early, early stages of development. There's been some rumors kicking around. Good little uh, Easter egg there. I love it. All right. So, Chris, back on track here, because through the power of editing, that will seem like it was seamless. All right. So going back to our review, how many cummerbunds is Doctor Strange Infinity War for you? For me, I mean, I get to... I've got to agree with TC. I mean, I got to go five for five. Like there's a few little nitpicks here and there, but nothing enough to bring it down even a quarter of a point. I think this figure as time goes on and the more time I spend with it, 
and have it interact with the other figures and stuff like that. I mean, it's just going to, I mean, it can't get better than five out of five, but it's going to, it's going to be one of my top figures too. How about yeah. You? Yeah. I'm giving it five cummerbunds as well. <laughs> and I feel like the posability of this thing that the possibilities are really endless, just like the multiverse. And, you know, one thing, as we've been talking about going through, we've done our, our rewatch. We're getting ready for Captain Marvel. We're getting ready for Avengers Endgame. Any, any part of any journey is the end. And I'm mentally preparing myself for the Avengers team to look very different in the coming years. If it doesn't involve Iron Man and Captain America for one reason or another, I'll be really upset, but I'll also be glad that I have them in my collection for nostalgia's purposes. But I'm also getting really excited about the potential of what a new Avengers team could look like. Spider-Man, Black Panther, Captain Marvel, Doctor Strange. I mean, Marvel just has this war chest of characters that are available to them. That speaking of Marvel Studios news, they had a podcast recently and they were talking about kind of that 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 journey aspect. And where the comics need to go on for forever, basically, and people if you die in the comics, like you can always come back. They'll find a way to rewrite you in. I think the movies give a whole nother take on being able to do that with the multiverse and time travel and all that other stuff. Anything is possible in the movies. They could always bring back a character from another dimension and poof, they're right back in the MCU. I don't know if they do that, but I don't know. I, I'm on all these tangents today. Maybe it's just because I'm not feeling particularly well. Maybe because we've been rambling for a long time here, Chris. I know you didn't get a lot of sleep last night. And uh, I'm just, I'm very excited about the future of Marvel Studios. I mean, they can really do no wrong at this point. I'm super excited about Captain Marvel and what that could mean. And uh, this machine ain't stopping anytime soon. It definitely is not. I mean, there's just so many properties, characters to come. I mean, we've got stuff that these characters that are, are not very well known like Shang Chi and, and groups of characters like the Eternals and, and we've got, and then established characters like black widow getting solo movies. I mean, just like there's so much possibility and I can't wait to see what's to come. And I don't know if I can keep up budget wise, <laughs> if they keep making hot toys for all these movies for Marvel, let alone star Wars and that sort of thing too. It's just, it's great. I love it. I love being a fan of, of Marvel and Star Wars and, and all these other, these franchises and stuff like that. It's just great. It's a great time. It's a great time to, to be a fan of this stuff. And yeah, we'll just keep the conversations going. Who knows? <laughs> so you know what else is, is a good time to be a fan of, Chris? It's the end of the podcast, my friend. It's plug uh, time. Oh, yeah. All right, so plug time. So we've got our website, sixscalescavengers.com. We've got a lot more content out there. We have a checklist for Marvel and a checklist for Star Wars if you're ever interested in what any of the prior releases are, what the original retail price is, a link to Sideshow to see the original images there or if it's something that's still in stock. Chris and I, we don't get any kickback for that. It's just a helpful resource for you to get there. We do also provide links to eBay. Those are affiliate links. So if you do click through and you do purchase something there, Chris and I will get a couple dollars that will be able to chip towards our hosting fees of the podcast. We have our T public store. Speaking of being able to contribute to the podcast, Chris and I will get a couple dollars from each t-shirt sale there. Helps us out, helps with the hosting fees. So we have our Facebook page, Six Skill Scavengers. We're on Instagram. We're now on YouTube. We're going to start posting the episodes of the podcast there. In addition to the Scavengers Assemble that Steve is doing, I really am looking forward to the potential of that. It's just great to be able to get more people together to talk about collecting and six scale. We have our private group out there, six scale scavenger collectors. If you want to join, please submit a request. Make sure you answer all the questions. We do have that group for listeners only. We are an Apple podcast, Google Play. We're now on YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, and sixscalescavengers.libsyn.com if you want to grab that RSS feed and throw it in your podcast catcher of choice. A couple of shout outs to friends in the community. PJ, the Paradox Nerd. You talk about watching videos, Chris, on your, on your TV. Man, his videos in 4K look phenomenal. 
on a big screen TV. My son and I were watching the review from Thanos this past weekend. Whew, it's very great. Uh, we mentioned Zach and the gang, Zach, Dean, Jesse, and Manny from the Collecting Weekly podcast. Give them a listen. And finally, give a follow to the Facebook group, Tossy Station, Full Scale to Six Scale Collectible, one of the best groups out there. Whew. All right, Chris. I think that's about wrap on episode 16. Uh, another long one. Another lot. Of, another one full of rants and rambling. But no, it was a great conversation. Love getting uh, the news and, and everything out there. Look forward to see what's next and uh, the next Hangout on YouTube. All right, absolutely. So we want to thank everybody for tuning in, and we'll be back soon. Stay tuned for Scavengers Assemble on YouTube. All right, Chris, bring us home. Excelsior. Excelsior.